Okay, so we're back. Back again? Was this round four? We are going to clarify um, the next question. This has been the burning question I've had, which is, what is the point of testing cholesterol if it's not going to give us the information that we need to know in terms of what is good cholesterol or, or mm. when are we in a situation where the cholesterol that our bodies are producing is actually harmful for us gotcha. versus um, it's elevated. For example, in some of, uh, because I work a lot with menopause, in some of my peri and postmenopausal patients, it's not uncommon to see it naturally, the cholesterol naturally climb up. And I've always explained it as um, the fact that the body needs a little bit extra cholesterol, building blocks for hormones. Sometimes we're inflamed as we're going through menopause or uh, we're not right. me metabolizing our carbohydrates effectively enough, so we're a bit insulin resistant. So there's all sorts of hormonal changes that go on in that zone of our life where I think a little bit extra cholesterol is needed. So Even when we're stressed and anxious all the time, yes. like our demand for cholesterol increases because yeah. we need more stress hormone yeah. to be synthesized. And so I, I think that um, sometimes a short-sighted recommendation is, oh my goodness, your cholesterol is high, we better give you some medication. So let's mm -hmm. talk about today, this is the big way, and mm -hmm. this is the mm -hmm. big question, which is, what really should we be looking at? So, if I had to give a cut and dried answer, um, I would say, without a doubt, just you have to get ApoB or LDLP tested. Okay. And maybe LP little a. What are these things? That's the big what question. are these yeah, things? What are these things? Yes. So, um, ApoB is the protein on the outside of LDL. And so, every LDL has a certain number of these proteins on them. So much so that if you, you can just measure the amounts of these proteins and get a really good estimate for how many LDL particles you have. But the name of the game is the LDL particle, which is the NMR. You can actually test for how many particles of LDL you have, as well as the sizes of them, which is fantastic. Uh, LP little a is a little bit different. We didn't get into it, and we won't, but it's, it's something that uh, uh, a proportion of the population just creates more of, mm -hmm. and it's also very dangerous and atherogenic. Most people don't have very much of it, like less than you know, five or two percent or something like that. Or I think it's even less than that. But anyway, some people express more of it and we just have to make sure that that's not happening. But if you were to test even just um, uh, LDLP mm -hmm. and LPA, you would have your best chance at predicting your cardiovascular disease risk. Okay, so this is super exciting mm -hmm. uh, for two geeks like you and I mm -hmm. because we really, uh, I want to know why I'm Get into something. this stuff, I right? Know why and I'm exactly. Yeah. And just to recap, we've got LDL, HDL, triglycerides, and when I go see my doctor, when we go, when we have patients who see their doctor, they're going to run a cholesterol panel, which is going to test triglycerides, HDL, LDL, and total cholesterol. And total cholesterol. Yeah. Now, what we're talking about is the LDL that you get tested by your uh, by a general blood panel is LDLC, correct? Which is which is basically the total sum of cholesterol being carried around by LDL. Okay, so back so, to our dump truck analogy, yes, it's the amount of gravel that. being carried by the trucks. Okay, so, so there's gravel, yeah. which is cholesterol, mm -hmm. which is LDL, LDLC. Yep. It's all the gravel. Yeah, how much and gravel is present in, in these dump trucks? Okay. So total of gravel in those LDL dump trucks. Right. Whereas LDLP is how many dump trucks. Okay. Yeah. Now, do we want, um, is there a, a good amount of dump trucks that we should have? The LDLP, like there's an ideal range of LDLP? You don't want it to be high. There is okay. an ideal range. It's on the NMR panel. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But you basically don't want LDLP to be elevated. You want it to be as low as possible. Okay, so you want as few dump trucks as possible. Yep. Okay. So there's no optimal amount. Like we, we don't say uh, we want you to have... There could be. And actually, there should be further study. I don't I don't know if there's been anything done to see if having a very low, like very, very, very low LDLP has any associated risks. But to a certain point, like you need some dump trucks, so there could be that risk. Okay. But on everything that I've seen, it's pretty much the lower the better. Okay. Yeah. And just to clarify, when you have your cholesterol tested, 
they're not testing this. They're not measuring how many dump trucks no. are in your blood. They're measuring how much gravel is. Unless they're testing yeah. ApoB specifically, yeah. or they're doing an NMR, which isn't in the standard of care in Canada, as I'm currently familiar with. So. Okay, I've never seen uh, yeah. a result come across my desk no. from a you know from somebody who's and brought their blood work. I don't think it's covered. In. I think people people have to pay out of pocket for that test to be run, even mm -hmm. if their GP was to run it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so back to the whole purpose of wanting to know the difference is because. There are recommendations around optimal ranges of cholesterol mm -hmm. with the um, idea that you don't want to have too much bad, bad cholesterol, which would be, again, to use to oversimplify it, the LDL. We want some of the, uh, you know, there's a, an optimal range for HDL, mm -hmm. which, again, we'll, for simple, for, you know, to keep it simple, we'll call it the HDL. But more importantly... Um, what we want to get to the root of is, is there a time where we should be taking a medication mm -hmm. because something about our lipid ratio is off and yeah. it's sticky or it's yeah, accumulating yeah. in yeah. that compartment where we don't want it? Mm -hmm. um, and what is that medication? And then what, because um, you and I both know about standard lifestyle and dietary recommendations that we'll make to address inflammation, mm -hmm. which oftentimes is a reason why the cholesterol goes high in the first place. Yeah, and inflammation is tricky too because like a lot of this atherogenesis, like it'll happen because of oxidative damage. So if you're a smoker, you're more likely to have that cholesterol if it's past the wall to become oxidized and be okay. atherogenic. Okay. So that's where lifestyle really does come into play, I think, is by keeping yes. oxidation low, keeping oxidative stress low, having good antioxidants in the diet right. actually help a lot with that whole process. But again, if that, if that uh, cholesterol isn't there to oxidize in the first place, well, hey, that's even better, which mm -hmm. is why having a low LDLP is so important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if, if I was to say like a good standard test, if I was to test and I want to know someone's risk, I'd probably run the NMR. Mm -hmm. I would double check their LDLP to make sure that it's low. I'd make sure that ApoB was tested. And you could run other things too, like HSCRP, just to make sure that inf inflammation is lower yes. in the body. Which is, which is a common marker. Yeah. Um, it, it's a C-reactive protein, which is um, a blood marker that is commonly tested amongst a panel of other, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes cardiovascular or heart panel uh, tests. So we are over our time. One more thing. I have to, <laughs> I have to. Another amazing thing about the NMR panel uh -huh. is that by seeing the different sizes yes. of the HDL and LDL, yeah. you can actually predict um, metabolic syndrome. So whether somebody is more predisposed to actually getting diabetes before yes. their blood sugar ever goes off. So it gives us so much value. So we thought we were done, but <laughs> we have to actually shoot one more video because you have just hit on a really key point that I want to emphasize, which is why do we bother and what are we going to do about this and how can we use this information to change the way we age. Mm -hmm.